of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this let's worship the Lord today because he came all the way from heaven down to save us hallelujah Come on. Oh, who do you call the wonderful counselor? Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh.
Stop. 
yourself. Show yourself strong. Show yourself. Show yourself mighty. Come on. Show yourself strong. Show yourself awesome. Show yourself awesome. In the midst of the storm, in the time of trouble, he will give us a song. Show yourself. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Oh, show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself awesome. Show yourself awesome. In the midst of the storm, in the time of trouble, he will give us a song. Show yourself. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Oh, that's all we're saying. Show yourself strong. Oh, show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself awesome. Show yourself awesome. In the midst of the storm, show yourself. In the time of trouble, it will give us a song. Show yourself. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself. Show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself awesome. Show yourself awesome. In the midst of the storm. In the time of trouble. He'll give, he will give us a song. Hallelujah. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself strong. Show yourself, strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself today, Lord. Show yourself Yes, Lord, in, in the midst of the storm, in the time, in the time of trouble, He will give us a song. Show yourself, show yourself mighty. Show yourself, show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself, show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself.
greet someone today. We'll be back. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel his warm embrace as we worship in this place. No matter what you're going through, God is here for you. so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel his warm embrace as we worship in this place. We worship in what you're going through. God is here for you. Good morning. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel. morning. How's everybody? Amen. So good to see everybody. We thank the Lord for this day. We thank him for his kindness, for his grace, and for his mercy. He has allowed us to see a brand new day. And for this we give him praise. We thank God for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Amen? Amen. We thank God for this season where we take special note of his birth. Amen? We thank God. We thank God for all you who have made it here safely. We pray that you will continue to be thankful and mindful and appreciative of the goodness and mercy of God. Amen? Amen. Those who are worshiping with us for the very first time, if you're worshiping with us for the very first time this morning and you did not receive a welcome packet, if you raise your hands, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a welcome packet. And if you're in the sanctuary, whomever you are, and you did not receive a bulletin and you would like one, you raise your hands at this time, we will ensure that you receive a bulletin. Amen? 
All right, we have a few things that we like to bring to your attention. First of all, um, we want you to pray for Sister Lorraine Manchester. I got a text this morning that uh, she's in the hospital. Brother Manchester uh, texted me this morning, so I want you to pray for her. And also, I want you to pray for uh, Brother James. He is a, he's the brother of Sister Bessie and uh, Sister Bailey and Sister Lucille and Sister Sarah. Uh, so we want you to pray. He requested, he said he knows this is a praying church, so he requested prayer for his medical condition. Amen? So we're going to hold him up in prayer. Amen? All right. Uh, let me see what I have here. Um, I, had, I had announced or I had sent out uh, information regarding a meeting that I'd like to have and it was scheduled for the 22nd for next Sunday but we're going to have that meeting uh, today right after service those of you yes those of you who got my information the married couples about the married couples retreat I sent out information that we we're going to have a meeting on the 22nd but I've changed that we'll have it today all right because 22nd you all gonna be ready to, after we dismiss, enjoy the Yuletide holiday, all right? So we wanna let you, uh, uh, we'll meet right after service today, all right? Um, the Christmas party is today, all right, at 3 p.m. So those with tickets, please meet us at the Proud Bird by 3 p.m., all right? We're looking forward to having fun and fellowship, right? Yeah. Amen. All right. This coming week is the final Bible study, midweek worship, and choir rehearsal for the year. <laughs> okay. All right. I was almost convinced. <laughs> so if you have any uh, business that you need to uh, take care of uh, with the church office, please make sure that it's handled by this coming Wednesday, all right? Because I believe on starting on the 23rd starts our weeks of rest. All right. Uh, okay. Project Meals is this Saturday at 11 a.m. and volunteers are needed by 9 a.m. All right? And if we live in the Lord's will, we're asking all those who can to bring a special sacrificial Christmas offering of $100 on next Sunday, right? And all sacrifices and gifts are appreciated. If you can't reach that, whatever you can give above your regular tithing and offering is appreciated. All right? Yeah. All right. We have on my notes here, we have a wellness presentation. Is that presentation ready? All right, let's receive our dear sister, Sister Maggie Whitman. Come on, we can do better than that. This is our sister. Amen. Amen. I'll be back afterwards. Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay, we wanted to... Um, use this time to um, acknowledge our Healthy Living class um, graduates and that from our last fall class. So we have their certificates ready, some are here, and we'll mail those that are not here. And we also have their picture, and we'll present one to Pastor, too. So um, you want to call off the names? Susanna Duncan. Donker. Donker. Is she here? OK. And Demetrius Hadnot. Keeson Godfrey, Chanel Mitchell, Enid Murgerson. Her son Leroy is supposed to pick it up. Leroy here? Okay, we're gonna get hers to you, Leroy. Okay. Verena Ann Jordan. <laughs> Stay up here. <laughs> there he goes. He's, he's coming for his mom. Come on up, Leroy. 
You can stand in for her too. <laughs> and we have Katana Sherelle. Jonisha Lindsay. Gilda Middleton. Sister Gilda. <laughs> Our class clown, Doc Matthews. We never knew Doc was so funny till this class. He was hilarious. Is he here? There, look at him. <laughs> He showed out, y'all, but he was a lot of fun. <laughs> Stay here, Doc. Right. Ladarsa Jones. Okay, that's everybody. Okay, so the others are not here, but we didn't want to prolong this again. We didn't do it last week because they weren't here, but we'll send the others. A lot of them may not aren't all members of this church, but we had a great class, didn't we? <laughs> so we want to come take our picture with you, Pastor. Let's come over <sighs> some. <laughs> Thank you. So for those that don't know, the Healthy Living class is just a, a six-weeks program, and we deal with just about everything from healthy eating, uh, stress management, dealing with chronic illnesses and how to cope, and um, just changing lifestyle. Just for a minute, the other graduates, can you stand? I see some back there. These are some of our past graduates from our All class. Right. Look in the back. Uh, so, someone else back there not standing, but we, where Lashan? There you go. <laughs> okay, but it's we we encourage you guys. We're going to do it again in the spring yes. and the fall, and keep it going. And our pastor is liaison for it, and this is a partnership with Kaiser West LA and Wise and Healthy Aging. Okay. We want pastor. Come on, pastor in the middle. In the middle. Yes, please. All right. Okay. Come on, Where's the middle? Three. I went to public school. Okay, okay three. Sonia over here, instructors. Okay. <laughs> instructors. All right, I'll be on the end. Okay. Healthy. Healthy. All right. Thank you. And just reminding everyone to stay healthy during the holiday season. Uh, don't overeat portion sizes. Take care of yourself in the cold. Wash your hands, sanitizers, and stay home if you're sick. Don't spread them germs. Right. Okay? And everybody stay healthy and happy holiday season. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We want you to be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. Amen? All right. At this time... We're going to worship the Lord in our giving. We see that last Sunday we achieved 100% of our weekly goal. Thank God. Amen. So we're thanking the Lord for that. Amen. We, we are we're blessed people. And God has been so kind and gracious to us, and he causes, he allows us to get the things that we need, and he just continues to bless us. And we're appreciative of the manifold blessings of God. We thank God for food, for shelter, for raiment, for clothes to put on. We thank God for his blessings. And this, when we give, we're giving to the Lord, as unto the Lord, just as an act of obedient worship, letting God know that we appreciate how he provides everything that we have need of. So we're not given because we are forced to, we're given because we love God and we love his ministry and we are partnering with God and we believe that we are investing in the kingdom of God, amen? The eternal kingdom of God and God has allowed us the vehicle of finances to get things done in his kingdom and to get things done as it pertains to our lives because we are in his kingdom. So it's not a, it's not a task. It's not a labor. It's not a, a, a thing that is forced for us to give unto God. We give because we have the nature of God. And the Bible lets us know that God so loved the world that he gave 
his only begotten son. And since we have the nature of God, we're giving people as well. Amen? Amen. So we, we celebrate God even in our giving. We have our tithing and our offering, and we have our building fund as well. Uh, so we just thank God for the opportunity to give back unto him. And we know that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and all of it belongs to God. But he allows us to keep a certain portion for ourselves. Amen? Amen. So we, we gladly, freely, and voluntarily give as unto the Lord. Amen? So if you're giving this morning uh, by way of check, please make your check payable to Home Assembly Church. Home Assembly Church. If you're giving electronically, you can exit those double doors and turn to your left. Or exit these doors, turn to your right. Someone will be there at the media center to receive your gifts. All right? As is our custom, we ask those who are willing and able, if you wouldn't mind standing with us this morning and hold your gifts that you're going to give to the Lord in one hand. And on the back of our church bulletin, we have our church unity prayer. In reading this prayer, we're asking God's continued blessings on what we're giving back to him. All right, let us begin. For this cause we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and that we would know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you, strengthen with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto you father which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into your kingdom Jesus for it is in you we have redemption through your blood even the forgiveness of sins. Furthermore, because the promises of God are true and our latter will be greater than our past, in unity we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all allowing God to get all glory for it is he that have made it so. In Jesus' name, amen. Be so kind as to follow the directions of our sanctuary support team from the rear. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our last song today is Joy to the World. We all know that, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Can we stand? Y'all mind standing? Let's stand. We're going to sing all the verses.
shall reign forever and ever. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you formed us out of clay, and for your glory, we were made. We're asking God that you would use this vessel in this moment as you choose and let my life, let it praise you. Bring thoughts to our mind, give us clarity of speech. Give us all ears to hear what your spirit has to say to the church. We're depending on you and you alone. You're all that we have and all that we need. So we bless you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk today about God's grace. And as I was looking and meditating prayerfully, I was looking at grace. It's a big subject, I would say. And it's, I would imagine it is inexhaustive. That means you can't talk too much about it or it's just phenomenal to me. But I want to use maybe as a subject strong grace strong grace. Walk with me, if you will, to the book of Romans, chapter number three, Paul's letter to the saints at Rome. All right? And this is familiar territory to most who read their Bible and study the scriptures. Um, but this is where we bring our thought from. Paul, in his speaking and writing to the saints at Rome, uh, in the third chapter of Romans, beginning at verse number 20, I have the Amplified Virgin. Paul is saying, for no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin, not mere perception, but an, an acquaintance with sin, which works toward repentance, faith, and holy character. Basically what Paul is letting his readers know is that the law will not justify anybody. And that I believe still needs to be echoed in our day and time because there's a certain segment of the world's population who believe all they have to do is keep the law. And then they condensed it down to 10 commandments, not realizing that there was over 630 ordinances in the law. Uh, and they are under the misinformed perception that all they have to do is to keep the 10 commandments. But Paul, in this letter and in this verse, realizes and he lets them know what the real function of the law was. The real function of the law was to expose sin, identify sin, and that's what it did. And it, 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 was, it was put in place to not only identify sin, uh, uh, but it was put in place to let us see our need for repentance. Uh, the law was given in one scripture, it said, so that every mouth could be stopped because no one could keep it. Because if you were, if you offended in one area, then you were guilty of it all. So he continues in verse number 21, says, but now the righteousness of God has been revealed 
independently and altogether apart from the Lord. I'm happy about that. Uh, he says, although actually it is attested by the law and the prophets. So the righteousness of God has been revealed independently and apart from the Lord. I thank God for his righteousness. And he continues and says in verse 22, namely the righteousness of God which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And it is meant for all who believe, for there is no distinction. That's something to be happy about because in actuality the law was, giving, was given to Israel. But God, in his grace and in his mercy, he has allowed the righteousness of God who is that is revealed in Jesus Christ because he is, in fact, the righteousness of God. And he has allowed God's righteousness to be manifested and revealed in Jesus Christ. So all we have to do, and I like how he put the end of that verse, and it is is meant for all who believe. So that includes us. And I'm thankful to the Lord that there is no distinction. All who believe, all who put their personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ, you can be a recipient of the righteousness of God. And I'm happy about that because that included me and that included you. That included everybody who have received this righteousness of God and have trusted in the saving power of Jesus Christ. Then he goes on in verse number 23, since all have sinned, you see that? Since all have sinned and are falling short of the honor and glory which God bestows and receives. One virgin says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I'm thankful to God uh, for his grace. Since all of us have sinned and we've come short of the glory of God, look what verse 24 says. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God freely and gratuitously by his grace. This is where I got the, the, the thought of strong grace. Uh, God's grace was strong enough and powerful enough uh, to bypass our sins. That's some strong grace. Uh, his grace, God's grace is as strong as God is. And his grace was strong enough uh, to be able to justify everybody who puts their confident trust and obedience, I might add, uh, in Jesus Christ. That's some strong grace. Because when I look back over my life and you look back uh, over your life and all the sins uh, that you are knowledgeable of uh, that you have committed before you were saved and after you got saved, God's grace uh, is strong enough uh, to deal with that. That calls for an intelligent shout right there. That's some strong grace. Huh? To cover all of our sins? Oh, glory. God, uh, I appreciate this grace. And this wasn't no weak grace. This wasn't any milk toast grace. And because God's grace is, is that strong, we, we should not cheapen it huh, by casually and carelessly sinning. Mm? Grace is too strong. It costs Jesus everything. Oh, Lord, help us here. All are justified. Oh, all are justified and made upright and in right standing with God. Do you know how blessed we are to be put in right standing with God? Huh? That's a blessing. That's a phenomenal blessing. 
huh? because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, because of him offering up himself for people who were enemies of his, then now we stand uh, no longer enemies of God, uh, but friends. Not only friends getting a little closer, but sons of God. That's some strong grace. <laughs> Oh, glory. Uh, I rejoice in the grace of God. I appreciate the grace uh, that is greater than all my sin. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Glory. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God. Oh, Lord. Men might misunderstand us. Men might hold things against us. But God uh, puts us in right standing with himself. If you, if you want to be in right standing with anybody, you should desire to be in right standing with God. Because mm -mm. he knows the real deal. Oh, glory. Thank you, God. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God freely. Nobody made God do this. He chose to do it. Because he's sovereign freely and gratuitously by his grace and his unmerited favor and mercy. God, I thank you for your mercy and I thank you for your grace. How is this done? Through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. Thank God that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He redeemed us from something that we couldn't keep. No way. Mm -mm. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We have a song. We have a song, y'all, that the angels can't even sing. This is not in the angels' playlist. They can't say redeemed. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Glory. No wonder the angels said, what is man <laughs> that you are mindful of him? Uh, all the, the angels, it, I can, can you imagine the angels being baffled uh, how God, the sovereign God who created angels, who created everything, uh, would just choose uh, to lavish his love, his grace, and his mercy on some mere human beings that wasn't even thinking about him. Mm -mm -mm. God's grace is strong, y'all. Uh, oh, oh, God, I thank you. It says, uh, through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus, if there's any value to being redeemed, and it is, you only can be redeemed in Christ Jesus. Uh, so you got to get in. Get in. You can fit in. Just get in because there's room at the cross for you. Uh, uh, God is trying to draw somebody. He's trying to let you see and examine how strong and powerful his grace is. You haven't done enough things where God's grace won't cover and forgive, but you got to come to God on God's terms because this is strong grace, and strong grace requires a, a strong response. Because this ain't weak. This ain't cheap. Uh, you can't raise your hand or shake somebody's hand. No, it costs Jesus too much for you to cheapen that kind of grace. Uh, verse 25 in Romans 3 says, Whom God put forward before the eyes of all. Oh, this is what he did when he sent Jesus uh, to Calvary as a mercy seat. Oh, glory. And a propitiation by his blood. He was Jesus was our mercy seat. Not only is see our mercy seat he's the lamb whose blood was applied to the mercy seat everything we need is in Jesus oh I, I thank God uh, for 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 him being our mercy seat I thank God uh, for his blood ah uh, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation. Don't you know that in 2019, there are people that are going crazy, they're out of their mind, there are people that are in all types of state of emotional and mental, what have you, and here we sit, the redeemed of God. Here we sit, reconciled with God, our creator. Here we sit, redeemed, oh glory. We sit redeemed. Yeah, there's some stuff going on that we don't like. There's some stuff going on that we wish would uh, get together. But can I just encourage somebody? It's going to come together after a while. 
<laughs> God's grace is strong enough to deal with all of our situations and all of our problems. So listen, here's the word. Don't be anxious for anything. Ah, thank God for this word. He said in prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. God says we can go to him with specific requests. And his grace is strong enough uh, to bear with us, uh, to carry us, uh, to support us, uh, to provide for us. Uh, thank God uh, for this strong grace. Because uh, if it wasn't God's grace, uh, it wouldn't stand the test uh, to deal with all of us. Oh, this is some strong grace, y'all. Huh, this ain't cheap. Uh, you can't put a price on this because the only price for this grace was to shed blood. Of Jesus Christ, uh, whom God put forth before the eyes of all. He didn't do it in the corner. He went to Calvary uh, as a mercy seat and a propitiation by his blood, the cleansing uh, and life-giving sacrifice. There's power in the blood, y'all, uh, of atonement and reconciliation. Now, how in the world can we apply this to ourselves? Great question. To be received through faith. We got to have faith in what God has done. We got to have faith in what God declares out of his mouth. And we got to have faith in what God manifested in the earth when Jesus came on to the scene. And he lived this life pleasing according to God and went to Calvary. We have to receive this through faith because we walk by faith and not by sight. I wasn't there, and neither were you, uh, when all this happened, uh, when Jesus uh, went to Calvary. But guess what? Uh, although we were not there physically, uh, Jesus had us uh, on his mind. We receive this uh, by faith. Uh, and uh, this is received again by faith, through faith. Uh, this was to show God's righteousness. Uh, God, <laughs> I imagine God saying, let me show you something. I want to show you my righteousness huh? because his divine forbearings. Oh, God put up with us. Oh, he, he, oh, look at, oh, look at the patience of God, huh? putting up huh? Huh? With, with mankind year after year, decade after decade, century after century, thousands of years going by, and God is still forbearing. Oh, God, I thank you for your grace because in his divine forbearance, oh, he had passed over uh, and ignored former sins without punishment. Look at the mercy and the grace of God. God said, all right, uh, I'm going to just forbear. Oh, thank you, God, for your forbearance. He put up with us. He put up with me long enough to allow me to hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. God said, all right, all right, all right. Uh, he can't help but sin because he's a sinner. Oh, but when we heard the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, thank God for the grace. Uh, uh, thank God for the gospel. Uh, and uh, we obeyed it. Uh, and we received the salvation uh, of our souls. Verse 26 says in Romans 3, it was to demonstrate uh, and prove at the present time in the now season. I'm thanking God that I'm living in the now season. Oh, God. I would have made it back there. No, 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 no. I wouldn't have made it back there. Uh, neither would you. Uh, you would have thanked God that you're living in the now, in the now season. Uh, that he himself is righteous. Uh, God is the only righteous one. That he is righteous and uh, that he justifies. Oh, glory. Say what you will about us. Uh, we've been justified by God. Uh, yeah, we don't do everything right. Uh, yeah, we make mistakes uh, every now and then. Uh, but we've been justified by God. Uh, God God is our justifier. And see, we need to know and understand that, that, that God is the one that, that justifies because we have an enemy. And the enemy is the devil. The enemy is Satan. And what he does, he accuses us. He is the accuser of the brethren. Yes, he is. But I'm thankful to God for his grace that God himself is righteous and that he justifies and accepts as righteous 
purchase him who has true faith in Jesus. Keep your faith in Jesus. So when that enemy, when you slip up, and from time to time we do, when we slip up, all we got to do is confess up. And when we confess up, God wipes our slate clean. So when the enemy, when the accuser of the brethren, who is the little G, God of this world, when he comes to us with the mess up, we all we got to do is stand and tell him, yeah, I messed up, but I cleaned it up. How did you clean it up? I confessed my sins. And according to the word, this is what you can tell the devil, according to the word of your God. Because hmm? he's the created being. Huh? I confess my sins and your God and my God says that he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So go ahead and accuse me, devil. I done dealt with that with God and God don't even remember it no more. So you might as well forget it. Don't come to me with that mess because it's under the blood. Glory. Now that's some strong grace for you. Glory. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul speaking, uh, Paul, Paul speaking uh, to Titus in chapter number 2 uh, and verse number 11 says, For the grace uh, of God, his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward uh, and appeared for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind. Oh, I'm glad huh, that the grace of God has come. Somebody ought to take advantage of the grace that has come. And what does this grace do? Great question. Verse 12 of Titus 2 says, it has trained us. Look how strong grace is. Not only will grace save you, grace can train you. And Lord knows we need to be trained. <laughs> Glory. It has trained us. What has grace? So you see how powerful this is? It has trained us to do what? To reject and renounce all ungodliness, oh, irreligion, and worldly passionate desires. Grace is my train. Oh, sometimes, oh, Lord, help me here. Sometimes we invest money because uh, we deal with these bodies. And sometimes when we really want to get fit, uh, we might even get a personal trainer. Oh, Lord. Uh, and, we, and, and we pay our money for the personal trainer, and the personal trainer will work us out. Sometimes we get angry <laughs> with the trainer because we have to extend ourselves and they push us uh, and they push us and it's like okay wait a minute now I'm paying for this but this is this is costing me something I don't you know I'm uncomfortable because I'm discovering some things in my body that I haven't used for a while I got muscles on top of well, fat on top of muscles and I'm trying to get rid of the fat and get the muscles so sometimes uh, when we get into the personal trainer when we engage a personal trainer in the beginning we think it's cool but when you got to get in there and get that work done you say I don't know if I'm gonna keep this up Huh? That's just the human side of it. But look at our personal. God is our personal trainer. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, grace trains us. What it trains you to do. To, oh, there's certain things. There's certain things that are not good for us. Uh, okay, I got to stay away. Um, 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 my wife and I are... Are, are trying, oh glory, trying uh, to uh, make some changes in our dietary intake. And uh, so, so, so we're being careful. We're being careful of certain things we can eat and certain things we cannot eat. And, 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 and it's good for us, but it, it, it is, it's going to take some discipline. And we just started, but I'll confess, I fell off. Yeah, I fell off. She asked me the other day, she said, what did you have? I'm telling myself. She said, what did you have? I said, I had some baked bread. Uh, see, I'm being technical. She said, where did you get the baked bread from? I said, Winchell's. <laughs> it's baked bread. Huh? 
Oh, well, okay, it's right. I told y'all I went to public school. <laughs> but I, I broke down and got some donuts. And I call myself being good. Watch this. Here's how we justify things. Don't tell me. I ain't talking about you. I usually would get chocolate or glazed or cream or jelly filled. Usually. But I call myself being good. I just got plain old, old fashions. No icing, no chocolate. But it still was the wrong thing to do. She was gracious. <laughs> yes, she was. I love her for that. I love her regardless, but she was gracious in that moment. If she asked some questions, you know, she had to go later. Well, what did you have? I have big bread. What well, kind of big bread? So she was, yeah, she wanted to know the real deal. Grace trains us. Huh? It trains us to reject and renounce all ungodliness, irreligion, and worldly passion. Worldly passionate desires. So let grace train See, grace is strong enough to train us if we stay under the tutelage of grace. Stick with the program. Hmm? Stick with it. Stick with it, right? And it, it teaches us to live discreet, temperate, self-controlled, upright, devout, spiritually whole lives where when we get to heaven no in this present world let grace train you let grace train us because hmm? I need the training and it's training us verse 13 says awaiting and looking for the fulfillment the realization of our blessed hope. When you train in the gym, when you train with your physical, personal trainer, you have a goal. We, I got to go away. I got to go away. My goal weight is 190 pounds. Yeah, that's the goal. It ain't no field goal. That's the goal. <laughs> I got a ways to get there. Somebody asked me, how much you weigh? I said, two. <laughs> they said, two what? I said, too much. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> But my goal, my goal is 190, right? And then we spend time, I don't know about me, we spend time on things that will help us, accessories that will help us reach the goal. Got a Fitbit. Counts my steps, exercise, and everything. Then I got a, I got a, I got a Fitbit scale that connects to my watch. But, if, but I got the tools, but if I don't do what it takes, all I'm doing is wearing accessories. We have the tools. We have the word of God. We have prayer. We who have received the Holy Ghost have his spirit, but we don't make ourselves available and yield ourselves to the word of God and to his spirit. All we're doing is carrying around accessories. And grace is stronger than our accessories. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's stronger than that. So we are waiting looking for the fulfillment, the realization of our blessed hope, even the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. This is where grace is training us. Keep going. You can make it. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. You can make it. You can make it. If you can't, if you can't go forward, if you don't feel like you can go forward right now, you just stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of having to done all that you can to stand. Sometimes we're not going to move forward. We don't move forward all the time. Hmm? Sometimes we got to stand. God wouldn't have put that in his word if sometimes we, get, we, we just had to stand. What are you waiting on? I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Well, you should do this. What is God saying? Huh? Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. God's grace is to, wait, wait, wait. He told Paul. He said, my great, now, now, this man wrote over 13 books of the Bible. Right? And I believe he can get a prayer through. Huh? And he said, he sought God three times for whatever affliction he had to be removed. 
And Paul said, this is what God told me. Me, a chosen vessel to bear his name before kings and before Israel and before the Gentiles. Me, who started churches, planted churches, right? Me, who withstood those people on Mars Hill. Me, who God allowed even to have favor in prison. Surely, God, all this work I'm doing for you, you can take care of this little thing in my flesh. Paul said, God said, my grace is sufficient. Huh? My grace is sufficient because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's why I call this strong grace. Because sometimes I'm weak, y'all. Hmm? All right. Uh, okay. Let me put it this way. Sometimes we are weak. But when we're weak, that's when God's strong. Oh, God's grace is strong enough to deal with all of our weaknesses. I praise God for that. I, I, no, no, for real, for real. Strong enough to deal with my weaknesses. Strong enough to deal with your weaknesses. Huh? And it, not only is God's grace strong enough, God's grace is encouraging. God, he lets us know, okay, you're really strong in your weakness. My hand is resting upon you. I'm showing myself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. God says, okay, I will. Huh? But you're going to have to go through maybe a little season of weakness. Because my strength is made perfect huh, in your weakness. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Because the power of God rests upon us in our weakness. Huh? We're weak and strong at the same time. Only God can do something like that. Huh? We're weak. I don't have all the answers to this. I don't know how I'm, I'm going to deal with this. God says, it's, it's okay. I got you. It's okay. My grace is sufficient. My grace can handle it. You're not going to do Your problems, which seem large to you, and they are. I'm not discounting your. Allow me to speak for God. I'm not allowing. I'm not discounting the things that you're dealing with. They are important to you. They are serious to you. You've been carrying them on your heart for a long time. Let me speak further for God. But can I remind you that you're in my hand? Can I remind you that I know the thoughts that I have toward you? Can I, yes God, can I remind you that you have me in you. And since you have me in you, greater is he that's in you. Put your hand on yourself if you got the Holy Ghost and say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. So whatever's in the world that's attacking us mentally, socially, emotionally, financially, spiritually, relationally, I got the greater one on the inside. And his grace is strong enough to deal with the situations and deal with me at the same time. Because sometimes I need grace to deal with me. Sometimes I need grace to help keep my mind right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't all that in a bag of chips and neither you. But thank God for his grace. There's another intelligent shout moment there. Oh, God, I thank you for the grace uh, that, that you freely give. What could I do? What could we do to earn it? Not a single thing. Oh, and he just floods us with it. 
Oh, he just say, here, 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 you need this. Here, 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 this is what you need. Here, you know, uh, I'm facing some situations, but, 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 you know, in my, deep down in my spirit. Now, on the surface, I'm, you know, I might be a little agitated, uh, uh, but, but deep down in my spirit, there's some peace. Huh? This to be, yeah, it's going to be difficult to deal with this at this particular time. But deep down, deep down in my spirit, uh, deep down, wait a minute, deep down in my soul, I got soul peace. Why? Because God's grace, uh, huh? God's grace is fortifying us. Uh, God's grace is lifting us out of the situation while we're in the midst of the situation. How? How was all that done? Through faith. Because his grace reminds us of what he has already said in his word. I ain't going to leave you. Not only will I not leave you, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to forsake you. I'll be with you in trouble. I said, I ain't going nowhere. You belong to me and I belong to you. Wait a minute. Here comes grace to tap me on the shoulder and say, who shall separate us from the love of God? Now that's some strong grace. Can life, death, principalities, things present or things to come, I'm, I'm persuaded, can none of these things separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? That's some strong grace for you self. We need the strong grace. We need to, well, no, well, we have it, and we need to be oftentimes reminded the type of grace that we have. Uh, oh, let me, let me move. Let me move. Let me move. Uh, verse 14, Titus 2, who gave himself, talking about Jesus, uh, who gave himself uh, uh, on our behalf uh, that he might redeem us. Oh, oh, oh. He might purchase our freedom. Oh, God bought my freedom, y'all. Hmm. Free from sin. Free from addiction. Oh, glory. Free. Oh, free. Free. Huh. Free. Huh? Stand fast in the liberty wherewith God has made us free. It costs something for our freedom. Christ. <laughs> he purchased our freedom from all iniquity. Oh, glory. And purify for himself. God did this for himself. Yeah, we the benefits of it, but God did it for himself. God said, I'm going to have me some people. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at God. <laughs> he said, I'm giving you grace. <laughs> yeah, you're going to receive it. But really, truth be told, I'm doing this for myself. Because <laughs> I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to present to my own self. <laughs> A people. Glory, hallelujah. Thank God uh, for that grace uh, that purifies us. Oh, Lord, I love you. I really do. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand it all, but I sure receive it. <laughs> I can't explain it like I want to explain it, but I'm glad I got it. Glory, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, I'm seeing through a glass darkly now, but that's all right. I'm seeing a little bit. But when we get there, oh, glory, hallelujah. Uh, oh, oh we're going to know something. <laughs> so let grace train us. Uh, oh, let grace train. Dust off the weights in your spiritual room. Uh, get the cobwebs uh, off of your equipment uh, and, and go back in the training room of grace. Oh, Lord, and let grace train you. Let grace build up your spiritual muscles so that whatever you have to face, you face it with godly integrity. Yeah, it's unpleasant, huh, but I got grace. And this grace is stronger than that situation. Stronger than those talking against you. Huh, stronger than those plotting against you. Huh, stronger, oh, than those who can lie right in your face. Huh, grace is stronger than every lie. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Uh, who gave himself on our behalf, verse 14, that he might redeem us, purchase our freedom from all iniquity, and purify for himself uh, a people to be peculiarly his own. 
<laughs> we ain't strange. We're just peculiar. Oh, glory. <laughs> peculiar what? We, we peculiarly belong to God, uh, his own people, who are eager, uh -huh, who are eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is filled with good and beneficial deeds. That we should be enthusiastic about walking in grace. We should be enthusiastic and, and eager about living holy. Huh? Because this grace is strong enough to train us uh, huh, to live holy. Huh? To live holy, to live soberly in this present world. Work out. Let's work out in the grace training room. What gym you go to, God's grace? <laughs> and you ain't got to pay no fees to join. <laughs> Just got to repent. Ah, glory. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you're a member. Oh, glory. You, you're a member. And then work out. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. Romans 5. Romans 5. Oh, I got to run. Romans 5, 18. Paul said, well then. As one man's trespass, one man's false step and falling away led to condemnation for all men. He's talking about first Adam. So one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God for all, I'm sorry, with God and life for all men. He's talking about Jesus, the second Adam, right? For just as by one man, 19 says, for just as by one man's disobedience, fall, failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners. Because of Adam's sin, the world was plunged into sin, right? So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him by the obedience of Jesus Christ. That's why we got to have faith in Jesus. Hmm. But the law, 20, came in only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and exciting opposition. But where sin increased, <laughs> but where sin increased and abounded, grace, God's unmerited favor, has surpassed it and increased the more and super abounded. Look at the power of God's grace. It super abounded sin. Lord have mercy. So that just as sin reigned in death, so grace, his uh-oh, what did, thank you. So, let me find it now. This thing trying to act up. Where am I? Let me scroll down a little bit. Yeah, here we are. Mm-hmm. So, his so grace, his unlearned and undeserved favor might reign also through righteousness, right standing with God, which issues in eternal life. You see how powerful God's grace is? It issues in eternal life. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, our Lord. We won't read. Well, maybe we will. We, we mentioned Paul in Corinthians, St. Corinthians 12 and 9. Paul, Paul answering, he said, he said, but he said to me, my grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. So God was telling Paul, you can deal with it because of my grace. So what we're telling ourselves through the word of God is we can deal with whatever we're facing because we have the grace of God. You're not going to lose your mind. The bottom is not going to fall out. Huh? God's grace is sufficient. His grace will bring you through it. And when you come through it, you're going to be victorious according to God's standard. All right? You need to know that. You need to encourage yourself with that. For my strength and power, it continues to say, verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 12, for my strength and power are made 
perfect, fulfilled and completed, and showed themselves most effective in your weakness. Paul said, he continues, therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities, that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. So what Paul is trying to encourage us is to glory in your weakness. Mm -mm. I got to wrestle with that for a minute huh? because that's not the natural tendency to glory in our weakness. Huh? The natural tendency is to kind of complain, kind of wish it would pass. Huh? But God, can you trust me enough? Okay, let's not be stingy. Can you trust us enough that we will glory in our weakness? Now, now that means I got to get in that grace gym and let grace train me how to do that because that doesn't come first thought, if we be honest. That doesn't come first thought. The first thing when our weakness comes or when we experience a season of weakness in whatever form, our first thought is not to glory in it. Hmm? Our first thought is, how am I going to get rid of this situation? Hmm? But God, help me to allow grace to train me huh, to glory in my weakness. Wait a minute. So then, so look at the mindset huh, that, I have to, that we have to have to glory in our weakness. Huh? The mindset will be, when weakness comes, we should accept it. That didn't work over there. When weakness comes, now if we believe this word, we should really accept it. Huh? And glory in it because we know that God is up to something. If we believe this word. I'm not going to be on the mountain all the time. But the same God of the mountain is the same God in the valley. So when I'm in a valley experience, God, help me to glory in you. I might not glory in the experience, but I'm not experiencing it alone. Because he's the God of the valley also. And if all I can do is praise God when I'm on the mountain. How valuable is that praise really? But when I'm in the valley. Yeah. Hmm, when I'm in the valley. When I'm in a low point. Can I muster up a praise that will glorify God? I don't know the answer to that yet. I'm just being honest. Because the valley is uncomfortable. The valley is frustrating. Stand flat footed. The valley gets on my nerves. I need more training and grace. I need more training and grace. Because if all I can do is praise God and shout when everything's going well, come on, what's the real value in that? Hmm? But if I need, I need a Job mentality, though he slay me, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. That's the type of mentality I need to have in the valley. So then I can glory. God's grace is strong enough in every valley, y'all. This is some strong grace that he's given Unto us. I got more, but that's enough. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to overkill. You got enough to take you to for the rest of the year. <laughs> if we heed it, if we receive it, and God help us to walk in it, I need to get into, into the gym of, of grace. Uh, yeah, I, uh, come on. Yeah. Sometimes we get spiritually flabby. Mm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get spiritually fl fl flabby. Did he say that? Don't he know we're streaming? I said it. 
sometimes we get spiritually flabby. We need to get those spiritual muscles in tune. Get back into God's gym. Not goals, gym. God's gym. Oh, glory. <laughs> Stay away from Santa Monica. You ain't got to go to Santa Monica. <laughs> Just go to your house. Go to your closet. That's where Grace Gym is. What you going to bring with you? The Bible, and that's it. <laughs> Just you and God and his word. And work out. And you ain't got to put this work out on Facebook. Just put your face in the book. Oh, Lord, who brought that rabbit in here? Don't everybody got to know what you're doing. Cut it out. You ain't that famous. You ain't that popular. Don't give the devil added ammunition to use on you. That was free. Y'all don't have to pay for that. But God's grace is strong enough. I remember, I remember a song that y'all taught me. See, my memory comes with the songs that y'all taught me. Talking about grace that is greater than all my sin. Amen. God's grace is greater than all of our sin. All right? You need to know that. And there may be somebody here this morning, although God has poured his grace out on the entire world, you haven't taken personal advantage of that. How do you do that? Great question. All you got to do is repent of your sins, have a change of heart, change of mind, change of direction, and surrender completely to God. Believe what we've told you, what we tried to convey to you. We got water here. See, we want you to repent. That's the critical and pivotal piece. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. All right? We want you to repent. Be sorry to God, right, for your sins. You were born that way. You had nothing to do with that. But God took care of that. He gave you an opportunity to be born again. And he's told Nicodemus, except the man is born again of water and the spirit, he can't see the kingdom of God. Take advantage of this grace. Don't cast it aside. It's strong enough to bear you. But God won't force his grace on anybody. He says, whosoever will, let him come. I got grace for you, but you got to come get it. So if you're here and you never, you never yet repented of your sins, been baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, this is an invitation for you. Not for you to join a church, but for you to be born again into the true church of the living God. For those of you who are watching by live stream, we are the Apostolic Faith Home Assembly Church located in the city of Los Angeles, California. We hope that something was shared through this live stream broadcast that will be a benefit and a blessing to your souls. If we live in the Lord will, we will see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, if you're here, whoever you are, and you need to accept this grace, you need to initially accept this grace, this gracious gift of salvation.